to order the May Pocosin City School Board meeting. Jesse. Christy Alday, a seventh grader at Pocosin Middle School, will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Christy is a member of the National Junior Honor Society and plays volleyball. She also loves to spend time playing the clarinet and working in art and photography. Her goals for high school are to make all state band and to graduate at the top of her class. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Brody McDevitt, also a seventh grader at Pocosa Middle School, will give us an inspirational reading. Brody is a member of the SCA, the Guys Ensemble of Chorus, and the National Junior Honor Society. He plays basketball, football, and is interested in track and lacrosse. He loves longboarding and hanging with his friends. His goals for his school are to start on the varsity basketball and football teams and to excel in advanced classes. His dad was in the Air Force, so when Brody was younger, he lived in Greece. To Cast a Stone by Karen Hamilton. Who has the right to cast a stone? to stand and stare, to snarl at others with a piercing glare. Who has a right to cast a stone, place themselves on a pedestal or high on a throne? Hmm. For you and I, we cannot judge. Neither of our paths will be clear of mud. We all make mistakes, we all grow old. We all fight to survive the bitter cold. Now I shall ask you again, but this time be true, for one day those stones may be cast at you. Next, we'll move into our student presentation. Uh, seventh grade English honors students at Pocosin Middle School recently completed reading To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. A selection of Ms. Katie Borgfeldt and Mrs. Leslie Harris's students will present highlights from the comprehensive unit of study. Students will focus on several applications, such as the Radley Tree Hall display, Maycomb County newspa newspaper group project, and the culminating tea party activity. The students are accompanied by Mrs. Borgfeldt and Mrs. Harris. Students participating in the presentation include Eliza Queen, Adam Tyler, Nick Biddle, Trenton Phillips, Christy Auday, Colin Freeman, Brody McDevitt, and Jacob Lewis. Our presentation includes an overview of Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird. We will discuss important themes and symbolism. In addition, we will outline a number of activities we completed. Scout Finch, her older brother Jim, and their widowed father Atticus, a lawyer, live in southern Alabama during the Great Depression. In part one, Scout, Jim, and their friend Dill are fascinated by the, their mysterious neighbor, Boo Radley. They fantasize about how to get him out of his house. Several times, Boo makes friendly gestures to the children, but never appears in person. Part two intensifies as Atticus is appointed to, to, de to defend Tom, <coughs> a black man accused of assaulting a white woman, Mayella. Although many of Macomb's citizens disapprove, Atticus agrees to defend Tom, which causes backlash from the community. Despite evidence of Tom's innocen innocence, the jury convicts him. Mayella's father is not satisfied with winning and vows revenge. He attacks Jem and Scout, but amid the confusion, someone comes to the children's <coughs> rescue. The hero carries Jem home, where Scout realizes that he is Boo Radley. Because of Boo's heroism, Scout and Jem are safe. In this situation, Scout understands what it means to climb into another another skin. 
and see the world from a different perspective. Hi, I'm Christy O'Day and I am portraying Miss Caroline who is Scout's first teacher. Today we will be learning about Harper Lee who is the author of To Kill a Mockingbird. Okay. Harper Lee was born on April 28, 1926 in Monroeville, Alabama. Lee based To Kill a Mockingbird's Maycomb County on her hometown. Additionally, many of Lee's own childhood and life experiences are reflected in this novel, including encounters of racism, injustice, and discrimination. Although To Kill a Mockingbird is a best-selling novel and received the Pulitzer Prize, Lee's, Lee does not enjoy major attention and rarely appears publicly. I'm Brody McDevitt, and I'm portraying Bob Yule. And I'm Julie Ellis, and I'm portraying his daughter, Mayella Yule. Mockingbirds don't do one thing but sing their hearts out for us. That's why it's a sing the send to kill a mockingbird, Miss Maudie. Harper Lee uses mockingbirds to represent innocent individuals who are destroyed by evil. Saying that it is a sin to kill a mockingbird means that it is wrong to corrupt or destroy one's innocence. In the harsh racist world of Maycomb County, the innocence of mockingbirds, Jem Finch, Tom Robinson, and Boo Radley is compromised. Boo, Rat and Boo Radley is viewed as the town ghost. They assume he's crazy, but in reality, he's just shy and lonely. He saves Jim and Scout from Bob Yule and becomes a hero in their minds. Tom Robinson is viewed as, is viewed as a criminal by whites. They believe he has no good in him and that he is a liar, but in reality, he is a sincere pacifist who works hard to help his family and does countless good deeds for other people. Jim Finch is very innocent and is forced through trials of maturity and psychological strength. He grows more mentally than he does physically because of the racism and accusations towards Tom Robinson and his family. Hi, I'm Adam Tyler and I'm portraying Boo Radley. One of the main themes is the coexistence of good and evil, which is the idea that people are completely good or evil. This book highlights the transition from Jim and Scout's innocent childlike view that everyone is good to the realization that people are both good and evil. They must also understand the threat that hatred and prejudice pose to the innocent and good. Atticus tries to teach that there is more good in people than evil, at the end of the book, Scout finally understands Atticus' perspective and learns to accept people for who they are. Hi, I'm Colin Freeman, and I am and I am acting as Nathan Radley. Jim and Scout begin finding treasures in the knothole of the old Radley tree. They come to the realization that Boo is leaving these special items, chewing gum, a ball of twine, soap dolls, a spelling bee medal, and two coins, and a pocket watch. However, after discovering Boo is communicating with the children, Nathan Radley, Boo's brother, cements the knot hole shut. We created our own Radley tree. Each student selected a favorite gift from Boo and a personal item to display. Hi, I'm Trenton Phillips, and I'm portraying Mr. Underwood, the writer of the Maycomb Tribune. I love writing this newspaper because I do it completely for fun. Most of the articles I write are not true and unrealistic. One article I wrote was about a mad bear that invaded town and kidnapped everyone in the county sandwich shop. Obviously, this couldn't be true, but it appeals to the reader. Lately, I have been getting some help writing the newspaper from Maycomb County's Middle School. They helped me write about the most recent matters in this town, such as a truancy problem in the schools, an agricultural pageant held on Halloween, Miss Maudie's fire, a mad dog that lurked the streets of town, and the trial involving Tom Robinson and Miss Mayella Yule. These newspapers and articles are being passed out to you now. They are probably the most informative papers I've ever produced in my reporter's life. I must say that my point of view on the trial involving Tom and Mayella is that I give my full support to Atticus and believe in all that he declares. Thank you for a dedicated time and I hope you enjoy my newspapers.
Hello, I'm Nicholas Biddle, and I'm portraying Atticus. And I'm Eliza Queen, and I'm portraying Scout. So, Scout, did you have a nice time at the tea party? I had a great time, Atticus. But are you talking about the tea party where Maycomb citizens came and gathered together? Yes, I am. At the tea party, we learned about the Ming we watched the video about Minglin, didn't we? Yes, we did indeed. Did you learn anything from it? Yes, I did, Atticus, but I didn't use it very well, knowing I'm Scout. <laughs> we also talked about the 50th anniversary of the book. After that, we, we had a presentation from Mrs. Maudie and Mrs. Gotti about etiquette do's and don'ts. <laughs> learn anything, Scout? Yes, I did, Atticus, but again, I still didn't use it. <laughs> After that, we had a very brave woman come speak to us. It's Mrs. DuBose. You know, she's a very mean old woman, Atticus. <laughs> Scout, that's not fair. You didn't know her like I did. She's one of the bravest women I've ever known. What do you mean? Well, she was addicted to morphine, but decided to die a free woman. No one will ever be, ever be able to bind her to anything else again. Wow, I didn't know that. At the tea party, we saw many make them count in residence. There's Sheriff Heck Tate and Mrs. Marty up there. And also, we have Mrs. Caroline, Mrs. Stephanie, and we had many fine southern cuisines. We did indeed. <laughs> and here we have a nice family photo with my child. <laughs> <laughs> and over there's Boo Radley with Mr. Underwood. It was very fun. I must say, I had quite an enjoyable time. And after that, we watched the movie of Starring Us, didn't we? Yes, I did say that I saw myself up on the big screen. Yes, you did, Scout. Yes, you did. Very, very well done. And I, I don't know if anybody else out there got the newspapers, but they are very well printed, uh, in color, has headlines. Uh, my favorite of the newspaper to even have a crossword. <laughs> and I'm glad we had it in the budget for you guys to print these things. Out. <laughs> <laughs> very nice job. Very nice job. That was very enjoyable. I uh, didn't want it to come to an end. I was having a good time. Thank you. Uh, do we have any additions or modifications to the agenda? We do not this evening. Okay, so next we'll move into uh, recognitions, and we have several. We'll ask that everybody uh, sit tight until after the recognitions. The board would like to come out and, and uh, uh, mingle and meet a few people. Well, the first person that we'd like to recognize this evening, evening is Casey Carruther, if she could come forward, please. <laughs> Casey is a senior at Pocosin High School. She won first place at the state competition of the Skills USA Aesthetics Competition, where she did daytime and fantasy makeup, basic facial massage, and took a written test. Casey will now move on to the national level competition, which will be held in Kansas City, Missouri in June. She is a second year cosmetology student at New Horizons and works part time at Bed Bath & Beyond. After graduation, she plans to work in a salon doing hair and makeup. And Casey, I have no doubt that you will do a wonderful job and perhaps I'll have to stop by. <laughs> Please join us in congratulating Casey for her award. Next, I'd like to bring Jennifer Seltzer forward, please. First, we're recognizing Jennifer because she was selected by the Newport, no Newport News Reading Council as the Reading Teacher of the Year. She was recognized for her leadership in Pocosin as we implemented a new literacy model, as well as for her leadership on the council and across the state. As a reading specialist, Jennifer approaches the task of teaching struggling readers with energy and creativity. Her lessons combine balanced instruction designed to improve decoding, comprehension, and fluency with a passion for reading and literature. 
Students are eager and excited to participate with her. We are proud to have Jennifer Seltzer on our instructional team at Burkosan City Public Schools, and we congratulate her for being selected as the Newport News Reading Council Teacher of the Year. And Jennifer, I hate to do this to you, but I need you to turn around and come back up again for me. <laughs> I have the pleasure this evening of um, announcing our Teachers of the Year at each of our four schools, and I'd like to start here with the primary school, and Jennifer Seltzer was selected as the primary school Teacher of the Year. This evening in the audience, we have with her, her husband, Adam Seltzer, as well as other family members, so thank you for joining us. Jennifer received her bachelor's degree from Radford University and a master's degree from Old Dominion University. She has nine years of teaching experience in our school division and a total of 12 years of teaching experience overall. As you know now, she's currently the reading specialist at Percocin Primary School. She served in leadership roles on the Balanced Literacy Curriculum Writing Committee. She provided expertise and leadership on the Reading Curriculum Committee. She provided professional development for staff. She serves on the primary school leadership team. She represents the primary school on the Teacher Advisory Council. She mentors new teachers. In addition to being the Newport News Reading Council Teacher of the Year, she's also a, a member of the Hospitality Committee and actually chairs it. She participated in the School University Research Network Literacy Study Group, and she also, in her spare time, is an assistant track coach at the, prim at, at the high school. Jennifer's philosophy is that all children can be successful. She takes students where they are and challenges them to continually improve through a variety of methods and hands-on learning activities. She has high expectations for herself as a teacher as well as for her students. Focusing on a child's strengths and unique qualities is a priority of her teaching. She considers helping to develop a, a student's self-confidence to be one of the best gifts a teacher can give to help encourage lifelong learning and success in life. Please join me in congratulating Jennifer Seltzer as a primary school's teacher of the year. <laughs> Next, if Esther Barnes could come forward, please. Esther was selected as the Percocin Elementary School's Teacher of the Year, and with her this evening, I'd like to welcome her husband, Ken Barnes. Thanks for joining us. Esther received her bachelor's degree from the University of Richmond and master's degree from Old Dominion University. She's taught in our school system for 23 years and has a total of 28 years of teaching. She currently serves as the elementary school's library and media specialist. She has implemented the new online catalog software Destiny and provided staff development related to it. She was awarded a PEF mini grant for all PES Reads Read Aloud program. She planned and coordinated the Read Across America Read Aloud program. She provided staff development for the school district on copyright regulations. She's a member of PE, PEA, VEA, and NEA, the Virginia Association of School Librarians, and Delta Kappa Gamma. Esther believes that Ralph Waldo Emerson's quotation, nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm, describes her philosophy as teaching. As a teacher, she knows she has the potential to have a positive impact on every child she teaches, thus making an impact on this generation and beyond. She believes that the fundamental goal of a teacher is to foster the learning process in a safe, respectful, loving environment, where students are actively engaged and given positive reinforcement. As a teacher and librarian, she believes she must help to foster the desire to learn and motivate her students to learn by showing her enthusiasm and passion for the subject she teaches, in hopes that the enthusiasm for learning will transfer to each student as she teaches. Please join me in congratulating the Elementary School Teacher of the Year, Esther Barnes. <laughs> Julie Lowry, if you could please come forward. Julie is here this evening with her husband, Paul Lowry. Julie is the Percocin Middle School Teacher of the Year. She received her bachelor's and master's degree from Longwood University. She began her, year, her teaching career two years ago in our school system. She currently teaches special education at the middle school. She organized a community of learners for Percocin City Public Schools teachers who work with students with moderate and severe disabilities. She provided professional development for her colleagues. 
She takes a leadership role in providing opportunities for special education paraeducators to learn new skills to assist teachers, to assist students. She actively supports the Ju Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, and she has studied abroad in Toledo, Spain. As part of her philosophy, she states that all students can learn to read, write, and solve daily math problems regardless of their physical or mental, mental limitations. She believes that it is important for the teacher to assist in building a classroom climate of where students want to participate, want to learn, and are driven to do their best. She has determined that there is no such thing as a perfect teacher. She writes, we can always learn new skills and techniques to increase our students' abilities in education. Therefore, I am excited to continue my educational journey, sculpt my teaching philosophy, and see how far I can advance my students. Please join me in congratulating Julie Lowry, our Middle School Teacher of the Year. Lisa Dykes, if you could please come forward. Lisa is joined this evening by her husband, Colonel Derek Dykes. She is the Teacher of the Year at Pocosin High School. She received her bachelor's from the University of Oklahoma. She taught two years in Pocosin and has eight years of teaching behind her. She currently teaches English 9 and drama at our high school. She's developed English 9 curriculum. She's been the theater drama coach for VHSL competitions. She leads the Pocosin High School spring theater performances. And she has also served as a teacher advisory council representative. As part of our personal philosophy of education, Lisa notes that becoming an educator should be a person's avocation and just not an occupation. She further states that creating and maintaining a diversified classroom is essential for students and teachers to celebrate all successes, big and small. Her approach to teaching is grounded in the belief that all students can grow and that it is her job to help them find the right path to achievement in education. Please join me in congratulating Lisa Dykes, our High School Teacher of the Year. At this time, I'd like to invite Steve Yatsky up. He's the Kiwanis President for a presentation for our teachers. This is uh, one of those uh, somewhat few moments when one is truly fortunate to be the president of the Qantas Club of Pocosin. <laughs> Honoring our, <t> <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> Honoring our teachers, um, especially those that excel is indeed a privilege for me. I just returned from my son's graduation at Virginia Tech. The foundational education he received here in Pocosin by dedicated teachers such as those we're honoring tonight was one of the primary reasons for his achievement. I, along with every parent in Pocosin, owe a debt of gratitude to these wonderful teachers. So representing the now 130 members of the Qantas Club of Pocosin, I'm pleased to present the following to these outstanding teachers. Congratulations on your selection as Pocosin's Teacher of the Year. Pocosin is blessed to have one of the highest quality school systems in Virginia due to the dedicated efforts of all of our teachers. Being recognized as the top teacher in such elite company is truly a testament to your commitment and proficiency in educating our youth. The Kiwanis Club of Pocosin strives to embody the goals of Kiwanis International in positively changing the world one child and one community at a time through our growing charitable work with Pocosin's school system. Your exemplary efforts for the 2012-2013 school year mirror our own to be a positive influence on our youth and our community. So we are therefore pleased and honored to present you with a $250 check in recognition of your outstanding work. And this is for your own personal use, this is not for your classroom. <laughs> <laughs> you could do a lot with that. Thank you, Steve, and to all the Kiwanians. We have a number of them in the audience this evening for the support that you continue to show for our school system, both here as you support our Teachers of the Year, but through the numerous activities you do, whether it's tutoring or working with our key club, our Builders Club, and soon to be our new club at the elementary school. With that said, I want to move on to an exciting moment and know that nobody here knows this until now, but I'd like to announce the School Division Teacher of the Year. 
The School Division Teacher of the Year was selected from a committee of um, members from across the school division, and the winner of this award will now go on to compete for the State Teacher of the Year. I am very pleased to announce this evening that our Division Teacher of the Year this year is Jennifer Seltzer. Congratulations, Jennifer. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you. <laughs> and we'll now move into break. <laughs> okay, so did you have a question? Yep.
All right, next we'll move into our presentations and reports. First up is New Horizons Regional Education Center Program. Mr. Joe Johnson, Executive Director. Mr. Johnson. Mr. Chair and board members, thank you for allowing me to be here this evening. Um, I also want to um, extend a thank you to Mr. Hux for serving as the uh, Pocosin board member on the New Horizons Board of Trustees, um, and especially the superintendent, Dr. Parrish, uh, who has served as the superintendent of record for the last two years uh, in the direction of New Horizons. So, Thank you all for all of your participation in New Horizons and for allowing me to update you on where we are with our programs and services. As you know, New Horizons is the largest and it's the oldest regional center in the state of Virginia. It is co-owned by the six school divisions on the peninsula and anything that the six school divisions would like to do in specialized educational programs, uh, they come for greater efficiency, they come together um, and do it through New Horizons. So New Horizons serves as your school for specialized education services. Uh, and I would like to report on how that's been going for Pocosin as well as the region. What a lot of people do not realize is the extent of the services we offer. Uh, starting with special education, we offer a significant program for intensive services with students with autism and those with emotional disorders. Uh, the focus there is naturally on communication skills, uh, academic remediation, as well as behavioral issues. These are students that could not or cannot be served and are placed there for the right purposes, um, cannot be served within the school division, so we serve them at New Horizons. Uh, that's an alternative to possibly more expensive private options or a residential option. So it's a wonderful service uh, that we provide. Another area is the Governor's School for Science and Technology. Uh, I am pleased to announce you have 13 students that have been accepted into the Governor's School for next year. Uh, five of them are in the um, uh, biological sciences strand, one is in engineering, and seven are in the scientific programming strand. Um, the, the Governor's School for science and technology, not only has those three strands, but students can earn up to 30 dual enrollment college credits. It provides an extensive, rigorous curriculum with, an, with a research uh, piece to it. In fact, today, the seniors were presenting their research projects to the business leaders and mentors. Um, Students from that program have earned, last year earned $4 million in scholarship and uh, are going, all of them have been accepted to top tier universities in the, in the country. Career and technical education uh, provides over 23 programs in automotive technology, construction technology, engineering and manufacturing, health sciences, human services, information technology, and public service. So you can see it's a wonderful efficiency when school divisions can come together and form those programs and labs and not having to offer it at every high school without, within the region. Eight of those programs are dual enrolled with Thomas Nelson Community College. We consistently have over an 80% pass rate on industry credentialing. And as you saw tonight with Casey, they do well. Uh, in fact, um, well, one other program area, and was talking to Casey that I wanted to mention this specifically, we also have in the evenings an adult and apprenticeship program where adults can come back for retraining for skills or new training to go into a career area. Uh, I just learned Casey's mother went through our, just finished our apprenticeship program in cosmetology as well. So that's exciting. So not only the high school students, but the adults. What I thought I would do this evening is just talk a moment about what your students did this year. Student of the quarter at Woodside Lane, Tyler Pollock in carpentry, Noah Todd in culinary arts, and Donovan Richards in job coach. At the Butler Farm Campus in CETE, you had Casey Crother, first place going to Kansas City to compete in the nationals. Uh, we have the largest contingency going to nationals since I've been at New Horizons. In terms of the uh, New Horizons NASA first robotics team, 
you had team member Zachary Clark from Auto Maintenance, Mark Ramirez from Auto Technology, and Jacob Freeman from Robotics all participated on that team. This year we had a new project with NASA. It's called High School Students United with NASA um, to create hardware. And it's to bring high school students and NASA technicians to create hardware for the space uh, station or NASA's interest. And you had two students that participated in that. Nicholas uh, Carvalos from HVAC and Timothy Lovell. One of your students was also this year Pocosin's Volunteer Firefighter Company's Apprenticeship Firefighter of the Year, Chase Gibbs. In the Governor's School, your team of Luke Wolf and Jacob Palmeraz placed 13 of 21 teams at the VCU High School Programming Competition. You had two students whose junior projects were accepted into the Tidewater Science and Engineering Fair at ODU, uh, Mark Thibodeau and Lev Taylor. There are other awards to come I just can't mention them tonight because they're at our final completer ceremony and so forth. But as you can see, not only are your students rolling in the specialized programs we offer at New Horizons, but they're excelling. And uh, I commend you on your leadership, your support of New Horizons, uh, and the regional <clears throat> effort in what we provide. Thank you, sir. Any, any questions? Uh, yes, I have a couple. I'll throw a couple. Of, I warned them. Uh, <clears throat> green technologies were a big thing four or five years ago. We were going to get into more green technology, the wind turbines, solar power. Didn't it kind of trail off a bit? Well, as you know, there was a lot of stimulus money provided several years ago to try to get green technology kicked off. Um, there is still a lot going on in legislation and everything regarding wind technology in Virginia and so forth. Uh, next year, we will offer a new course, uh, a half-day program at this point. It's anticipated. It's going to be called Electricity and Renewable Energy. Uh, that, part, that program was developed by the business community to help focus on photovoltaic and uh, solar energy. So we will begin with that aspect. Yes, ma'am. You said we're going to have 13 students there next year? And Go how many do we have this year? We, you have accepted 13, and I believe right now you may be at 11. 11 this year. So you have increased in terms of a couple students and acceptance. We usually have a couple, one or two, that may not decide to attend. And keep in mind that's just for the governor's right. school. Then we have a number for CTE and special ed. Gotcha. Yeah, your number in uh, career and technical education for next year is 51 that has been accepted. I will say that you've had students apply and be accepted in just about every program we offer. Great. Thank you. So they have expanded, you know, applied for all different programs. And that would be because of Mr. Huck's leadership, correct? <laughs> <laughs> Without a doubt. Uh, he has been a wonderful leader on our board. <laughs> thank you. Anybody else? Well, thank you very much, sir. Uh, we certainly appreciate your work and all that you offered our students. Really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, next up, we'll uh, go into our financial update with Mr. Bowen. Good evening, Chairman Carter, school board members, and Dr. Parrish. I just have a few items tonight in the finance update. First of all, um, a budget update. At the City Council's most recent meeting, the Council did approve um, our FY14 uh, school budget as adopted by this board. And as a result, there's no further action that's required at this time. Um, so we're very happy that budget now is, seems to be over. Um, in your packet this evening, there is a resolution for the Virginia Retirement System. This resolution is required as part of the member contribution phase-in that began July 1, 2012. Uh, as you may recall, the 2012 General Assembly required employees to begin paying their 5% member contribution beginning July 1, 2012. School divisions had an option to phase in that, um, uh, that contribution for their current employees. So uh, for the current year, uh, PCPS phased in 2% 
push 2% of the member contribution to employees. In our budget for next year, we are, we are uh, phasing in an additional 1%. Um, and, and we will have the option to phase in the remaining 2% uh, either over a two-year period or we can do it all next year. But we're really de dependent upon uh, the state financing um, for next year. Um, and just as a, as a side note, employees that were hired after July 1, 2012, they are required to pay their full 5%. So there's no phase-in requirement for them. They, the day that they're employed, they, they pay their 5%. So we have a couple of different employee groups that we're tracking um, as a result. As part of the 2014 budget, the school board approved a raise totaling 3.2%. 1.2% of the raise is related to the VRS phase-in. It was 1% and then uh, for the VRS phase-in, then a 0.2% uh, to make the employees whole. Because that 1% uh, phase-in to the employee, they actually lose money. So it's about 2% and that covers just about 95% of our employees to make them whole. Um, the 2% raise uh, is what General Assembly approved for all SOQ fund <coughs> instructional and support positions. I wanted to mention this uh, as, a, as a reminder to staff and the board that although the budget has been approved and the 2% raise is included in the budget, the state funding is contingent on the fact that the state general fund revenue estimates do not result in downward revisions. Uh, the state comptroller can trigger a reforecast of revenue at the end of June. Uh, if that occurs and the revenue um, is less than what it's currently projected, then the state funds will be lost. And, and if that occurs, if the state funding is lost, then um, the superintendent will be presenting uh, a budget revision, a budget amendment at the July meeting. Um, and finally, uh, staff met this week with our auditors uh, for our kickoff meeting. Um, preliminary work has already begun. This will continue throughout the summer and will kick in full force in September. And we will have a final report um, as a result um, for you at the December board meeting. And that concludes my report for this evening. Thank you, sir. Any questions? I do have a question. Okay. Part of the uh, the money savings we had this budget was um, the change in the health care program for the employees. What is the length of contract with Anthem? Um, three years. Three years. Okay. That's it. Thank you. It, Mr. Bowen, is all that funding lost or just a portion of it if they reforecast? The, the state funding would be lost. It was 277000 for the right. for the uh, raise. 121 was from the state. The, the school division had to come up with 156. So the portion that would be lost would be the 121000 We would still have 156000 to um, to consider that portion for a raise. Right. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next up, we have the operations update with Mr. Pappas. Good evening, Chairman Carter, school board members, Dr. Parrish. Mm -hmm. In the area of maintenance and custodial services, the school year is being reinvigorated for us as summer approaches. We are working together with principals to come up with a comprehensive schedule of events that need to take place, projects that need to be done so that the buildings can be ready for the return of faculty and students. In the area of transportation, the most important thing we do is safely transport students to school from home and from school to home. And while we take a lot of pride in educating our drivers and working with them, Something that you've heard me talk about before is the rodeo. Your county does a bus rodeo. And in the past, I've told you, we've had several people participate. This year, we had six of our bus drivers participate. And I'm very pleased to tell you that one of our drivers took second place overall. This is a very rigorous series of tests. I was a judge. They have to drive all the wheels between little tennis balls. They take a rigorous written test, and Ray scored as the number two highest score on both the written and the practical. 
very happy. All of our drivers enjoyed the process and they all learned. So we're already promoting it next year for other drivers. This year was the first year that we introduced a routing software. Previously, we did all of our bus routing on a tabletop. And in fact, when we consolidated runs, we actually had Dr. Parrish helping us. This year, we put it all in a computer program and that's been very helpful. <clears throat> this summer, in anticipation of next school year, we'll be working on rolling out a field trip program so that teachers can quickly and efficiently go in, open up a page, enter all their data, and then as it goes through the approval train, they'll be kept abreast of what's happening and things will get approved very quickly and they have a history of what's happening and the office staff can see at any given time everything that's happening. We're really excited about that. And Mr. Pirelli and several of his staff have been using the system with transportation on a trial basis and we're looking forward to full deployment next for the, for the fall. In the area of food services, you, know, you all know that we are regulated and inspected regularly. <clears throat> Today was no different. Today the USDA came down and they did their inspection, which used to be three years, but now is every two years. And what they do is they went into every one of our facilities and they looked through every cooler and all of our paperwork going back for four years, checking on commodities. Now commodities are rice, flour, fruit, vegetables, canned goods. And we get a significant amount of that as a part of participating in the National School Lunch Program. Of course, they want to make sure we are handling all of that appropriately, and I'm here to tell you that we passed with flying colors. Additionally, in food service, we'll be meeting tomorrow with the Virginia School Nutrition Department folks and learning about the new challenges with the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act that we have to phase in for next school year. And that concludes my report. Questions? Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Pappas, what is Ray's last name? Quillis. Quillis. Thank you. Drivers here. Anybody else? Is six drivers a posse? <laughs> <laughs> Cattle drivers? <laughs> That's a bunch. Ms. Whitaker. Question for you. Um, as we all know, what's in the news right now is about a school collapsing in Oklahoma because of a horrible tornado. Um, we also all know that sometimes every amount of preparedness that you can do is not going to change the outcome of certain things. When you have something that's 200 mile an hour winds, buildings are going to fall. It made me wonder, however, um, not doubting our, um, our processes or our tornado drill that we held in March, but uh, what goes through determining the safest spot of our facilities. What uh, it seems that everything is a hallway with the children near near a wall, you know, duck and cover, that sure. kind of thing. But if you could, um, you know, give us a little information sure. on how that's determined. Well, the Department of Mines and Minerals puts out a whole slew of data of which I read and inculcate into my thought process. And in the case of the elementary school, we actually worked with the architects. The school was just built, they were available, and we said, Let's talk about tornadoes. Let's, and we went through and we devised spaces and locations for our students to be in, in that scenario. So we learned from those two sources as well as working with the people uh, over the bridge in Gloucester as to what they saw. And I personally went firsthand and inspected that building and, and was able to take what I learned in books and see firsthand and realize that the smaller the space with more cinder block walls around you, the better. And, and in that regard, principals and I have talked. We now put people in very small spaces uh, to make sure that we can safeguard them to the best of our ability. And we reassess mm -hmm. how did it go? What do you think? I yes, said, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you very much, sir, and congratulations on your successes. All right, let's see. Next, we will go into the instructional update with Dr. Cataldo. Good 
Good evening, Chairman Carter, members of the board, Dr. Parrish. Uh, this evening, the instructional update uh, focus will be on finishing this year out strong uh, in regard to student achievement. Uh, we've mentioned so often that we clearly value the uh, achievement results we see when we look at standardized tests that our students take. Uh, this spring, primary school students will be taking the Phonological Awareness Literacy Screening, which is better known as PALS test, uh, to ensure they have the requisite reading skills necessary for success. Uh, students in grade 3 through 12 are currently taking SOL tests, and uh, those measure student uh, content mastery. Um, our secondary students take advanced placement exams and also career and technical education credentialing exams. Uh, they do that in the springtime, and uh, these tests represent ways uh, we measure student achievement uh, for our students. Uh, we also recognize achievement here in PCPS. Um, our school board meetings capture our students' achievement each month, as we saw tonight, um, in our student recognitions. Um, our schools also recognize students for their hard work. At the primary school, they recognize math wizards. Uh, these are students that master basic uh, facts, uh, math facts throughout the year. Um, at the elementary school, uh, they present awards each quarter, each of the three quarters. Uh, students on honor roll um, and who show the most improvement um, are recognized. And new this year at PES, we had the No Bully Award. Um, at Picosa Middle School, teachers um, present students with awards uh, for achievement of their class in their classrooms uh, towards the end of the school year. And in eighth grade, as students are preparing to leave and go to the high school, they always have an eighth grade celebration and that honors the accomplishments of these students. Um, at the high school, we've recently just inducted students into the National, um, National Honor Society, uh, recognized honor graduates, as well as held departmental honor society programs. Uh, prior to the end of the school, the uh, Pocosin High School Band, the Chorus, and the Athletic Department um, will honor their students as well. Uh, we are proud of the work that our students and staff um, and teaching staff do, and uh, I know you will join me in congratulating them all on their accomplishments. Um, I would say that we've definitely had an excellent year for our students in their achievements this year. Thank you. Any questions? Dr. Cataldo? Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Ms. Sidney, would you like to take us through the consent agenda, please? Yes, the consent agenda for this evening is A, approval of financial reports enclosed, B, approval of personnel action enclosed, and C, authorization to accept and expand revenue enclosed. Thank you. Do I have a motion <coughs> to approve the consent agenda? So moved. A second? Second. And Mr. Bowen, could you call for vote, please? <clears throat> Mr. Hux? Aye. Ms. Wilson? Aye. Ms. Whitaker? Aye. Mr. Milton? Aye. Mr. Cast? Aye. Ms. Sidner? Aye. Chairman? <clears throat> Aye. <clears throat> the motion carried on a vote of 7 0. Thank you. Other matters for consideration. First up is consideration of approval of minutes of the regular, uh, of the April regular meeting and work session. And do I have a motion to approve? So moved. A second? A second. In discussion? Thank you. Ms. Bowen, could you call for a vote, please? Mr. Hux? Aye. Ms. Wilson? Aye. Ms. Whitaker? Aye. Mr. Melton? Need to abstain. Mr. Cast? Aye. Ms. Sidner? Aye. Chairman Carter? Aye. The motion carried on a vote of 6 to 0 with one abstention. And next up is consideration of approval of VRS employee member contribution <coughs> phase in. Dr. Parrish? Yes, I think that Mr. Bowen did an excellent job of ex explaining this to you. I just want to highlight the fact that um, when the General Assembly passed um, the legislation that would have us uh, switching the employee um, share to the employees, it was not a cost neutral change for the school division or for the employees. So we have again been able to cover the, the, the loss that they would feel from the switch to break them even, but we as a school division are once again absorbing the cost to the school division that we incur because of this. So um, I just wanted to once again highlight that fact for us as we're finishing budget this year. But with that said, I uh, recommend approval of the VRS employee member contribution phase in. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve 
item B, cons uh, the VRS phase in. My motion that we approve the VRS employment member contribution policy phase in. Second. Second. Any discussion? Thank you, Mr. Bowen. Could you call for a vote, please? Mr. Hux? Aye. Ms. Wilson? Aye. Ms. Whitaker? Aye. Mr. Melton? Aye. Mr. Cass? Aye. Ms. Sidner? Aye. Chairman Carter? Aye. The motion carried on vote 7 0. Thank you. Uh, item C, consideration of approval of fiscal year 13 pay plan. Dr. Parrish? Yes, again, Mr. Bowen did an excellent job of outlining this for you. I just want to, again, stress the fact that at this point we fully intend to provide a 2% raise as long as the state provides the, um, the funds that they um, indicated they would through the budget process. However, if those funds are withdrawn, what I will come to you with in July would be a recommendation to utilize the local funds that we have in the budget, which would then provide employees with just over a 1% raise. I will remain optimistic that we won't have to do that, that we will be able to provide the 2% raise, um, and we, should, we will know by the end of June if that, if that will um, come to be true. So with that said, I recommend approval of the fiscal year 13 employee pay plan. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve pay plan? So moved. Second? Second. Any questions? Issues there? Thank you. Mr. Bowen? Mr. Hux? Aye. Ms. Wilson? Aye. Ms. Whitaker? Aye. Mr. Milton? Aye. Mr. Cast? Aye. Ms. Sidner? Aye. Chairman Carter? Aye. The motion carried on a vote of 7-0. Uh, last up is consideration of approval to increase meal prices for uh, school year 2013-2014, which was, uh, there's a reading file enclosed. Dr. Parrish, would you like to speak to that? Yes, um, I've certainly now mentioned um, the state and funding, so let's just talk for a few seconds about the federal government. We are bringing forward to you um, the request to raise lunch prices at all four schools by five cents and to raise breakfast um, prices of five cents at all four schools as well. This is a result of the requirements and regulations that come to us from the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act of 2010. As um, Mr. Pappas discussed earlier, we anticipate um, having to implement additional regulations in the coming years, and therefore more than likely are going to have to bring to you um, additional uh, price increases. But for this year, we're looking at five cents for both lunch and breakfast. So with that said, I reckon appro approval of the meal prices as presented for the 2013 and 2014 school year. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve the meal prices? I'll move that we approve the increase to meal prices for 2013-2014. Second. Second. Any questions? Yeah. Why was there not an increase in, and I probably should have read this, but um, in the breakfast for adults? The adults, I don't, and uh, Mr. Pappas, I mean, you bring forward, they're typically not buying the breakfast. Um, this, it's really aimed towards the students, but I did fail to highlight there is an increase for the adult lunch for by five cents. Okay. Anybody else? Um, I will refrain uh, from my um, comments about our federal government dictating what we have to charge our students in Pocosin. They have no clue what our locale goes through. Um, and I'll just call for a vote. How about that? Mr. Bowen? Mr. Cox? Aye. Ms. Wilson? Aye. Ms. Whitaker? Aye. Mr. Melton? Aye. Mr. Cass? Aye. Ms. Sidner? Aye. Chairman Carter? Aye. The motion carries on a vote of 7-0. Uh, do we have any public comment? Uh, no, we do not. All right. Dr. Parrish, could you kick us off with our communication, please? Yes. Um, I would like to congratulate, again, all of the teachers of the year, but also all of our teachers who have worked so hard during the course of this year, and as well as the students that um, Dr. Cataldo certainly recognized some of the awards that they receive. Um, a lot of hard work goes into everything by our students and teachers, and I really congratulate them for that. Um, I also want to just thank, again, our city manager, uh, Mr. Wheeler, for working so closely with me through the budget process, and also, again, to council for the support that they provided us through their final approval of the budget request that we made last week. Um, and two, just um, tied to everything, we saw Kiwanis here, but we continue to get um, 
just incredible support from community groups um, with our schools and that does make the difference especially in these tight budget times so we thank them for that uh, I can't not mention the fact that this is our last meeting with Jessie because she will be I believe at Girls State in June but we will bring her back to recognize her next year so she'll just be in a different chair when we do that but it's certainly been a pleasure having you and hopefully you enjoy the rest of your school year with that said believe it or not the next time we meet we will have graduated the class of 2013 so um, my early congratulations to them but again as I told a group of honor students the other day school is not over um, um, we still have a number of weeks left, so I hope everybody stays focused, especially because we are in the midst of SOL testing this week, and um, I'm sure that everything will go well. And finally, um, as Ms. Whitaker alluded to, I would just like to share um, that certainly my thoughts, and I know members of many of us through the school divisions are with the um, families in Oklahoma today. Jesse. Good evening and thank you, board. At the primary school, they had a terrific family math night in April with over 65 families in attendance. Each family went home with materials and game ideas to help their children at home. PTO family fun night is tonight and this month's theme is physical fitness. The first grade will be holding their annual economics fair on May 30th. The children make a product to sell and earn money to spend. They have to pay their bills first and then go to the fair. It is a very fun morning and the children learn a great deal about consumers and producers. At the elementary school, they raise $225 from the Empty Bowls silent auction and this money will be donated to, to the Peninsula Food Bank. SCA sold candy grams earlier this year and is donating $250 to Relay for Life and $250 to the Animal Aid Society. The 4th and 5th graders went to Richmond last week for a field trip that helps prepare them for the Virginia History SOL. This is a very educational and fun field trip that is made available to all of the students. Good luck to the PES Odyssey of the Mind team that headed to Michigan today to compete in the world competition. And just a reminder to all parents that PES is SOL testing through June 7th, so it is imperative that students be at school every day unless they are sick. At the middle school, SOLs are in full swing as well. Please check online or ask your student for the schedule. The Spring Choral Concert is Thursday, June 6th at 7 p.m. And the 8th grade celebration will be held from 6 to 10 p.m. on Friday, June 7th. 7th graders will be going to the Norfolk Zoo on June 10th. At the high school, SOL testing is this week and CTE testing is next week. The band concert is Monday, June 3rd at 7 p.m. at Tab High School. The scholarship and award night will be on Wednesday, June 5th, starting at 7 p.m. in the Forum. Graduation is on June 15th at Bethel Temple, starting at 11 a.m. And congratulations to Joseph Lombardi, myself, and Casey Wilson on having their video, um, having our video entitled "Education Women's Educated Women's Effect on Population" being selected as one of the top 10 videos submitted in the category out of 550 students submitted across the nation. And the Pocosin High School was ranked by Newsweek and U.S. News and World Report in their best in the ranking of best high schools in the country. And congratulations to the the Pocosin High School Symphonic Band, who have been selected to give a concert performance at the 2013 Virginia Music Educators in Service Conference in November at the Homestead Resort in Hot Springs, Virginia. Although the Virginia Honor Band is the highest award a band can receive in the state of Virginia, performing at this concert is the highest honor reserved for the finest performing ensembles in the state. And only two bands in the whole state are selected for this. And I asked Mr. Schwul if he cried when he heard about this, and he said he almost did. And that concludes my final report for the school board meeting. Thank you, board, for a wonderful year. Thank you, Jesse. Mr. Hux. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to express appreciation to Pocosin City Council for the steadfast financial support that they have provided, uh, especially uh, in recent times with the reduction in state funding and the additional support that the City Council has provided us to help compensate for the reductions in state funding. A thank you to Pocosin Police Chief Cliff Bowen and the entire Police Department for the outstanding support they have provided as they always do but especially with the issues that we have dealt with over the past few weeks. 
I understand that the junior senior prom and after prom party ran very smoothly, uh, due in no small part to all the parents that participated. So thank you parents for all your support, your effort, and your dedication. And finally, I'd like to congratulate Mr. Ray Quillis and all the bus drivers that participated in the bus rodeo, and especially congratulations to Mr. Quillis on his second place finish. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. <clears throat> I just wanted to say how much I enjoyed the To Kill a Mockingbird presentation tonight. I just found that to be fabulous on, in all accounts. And I want to thank Jesse. Um, we are going to start interviewing this week for student rep again for next year. And so always looking forward to that. Um, each year we get awesome candidates. So that's about it. Thank you, Ms. Whitaker. Uh, I would also like to thank Jesse for her time. We both started at about the same time, new to the board, and, and uh, so it's been wonderful having another uh, freshman, so to speak, <laughs> here on the board, sitting down here to my right. So thank you, Jesse, for all the all the work that you have done. Uh, I'd also like to take this opportunity. Um, this is where my professional life likes to kind of slip on in here and just share with uh, everybody. Um, this weekend uh, begins the tax-free weekend for storm preparedness. Um, everybody should get out there and buy some stuff tax-free uh, for your homes so that we have safe kids coming back to us in the fall. God forbid we have any kind of weather issues. Uh, there are, there's a whole list on the um, virginia.gov website, bungee cords, rope, duct tape, Rubbermaid totes, and uh, one thing specifically that I would like to mention that if our schools do not have them, I am willing to buy them and donate them because I know how the budget being what it is. But one thing tax-free that every home should have is a weather radio. You can program them that they only go off for this area, for York, Pocosin, Newport News, Hampton, so you know what weather is approaching. And there are wonderful things. I have one in my office at work that really greatly annoys my office mates, but they also like it when it goes off and it's helpful information. So um, I would really like us to have those in the school. And like I said, I'm, I'm willing to make a donation. We do have them. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> I'm very happy. That is all that I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Melton. Uh, this is a season of graduations. I attended the Thomas Nelson Community College graduation last Tuesday evening. I'll be attending the uh, career and technical education uh, graduation for uh, New Horizons, and uh, that'll be on June 6th. It's a Thursday night. That's a little bit of a change for them. And I'm looking forward to our graduation, Coastal High School. And I'll also be attending uh, a May 30th. Career and Technical Education Committee meeting in Richmond for the state of Virginia, and we have another one falling right behind that in June. Our, our spring meeting was pushed back to accommodate a few a few people's schedules, so uh, I have back-to-back -back meetings, but uh, we're doing some good work on behalf of Career and Technical Education across the uh, state of Virginia. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to congratulate the teachers of the year. It's a great example of the wonderful teachers that we have in our, our school system. And um, so much has been said, and I agree with all, but I'd like to say, Jesse, you've been the best part of our meetings. You're a little better than the rest of us, so thank you. Very much. <laughs> great job. <laughs> Ms. Sidner. I'd like to uh, congratulate all the teachers of the year. And also thank the Kiwanis for their support. Um, I know that's a, a nice bonus that they um, supply for them, and it's well earned. Um, I have no doubt. And thanks, Jesse. You did a great job this year. And um, just looking forward to graduation. And I'm sure um, there are several seniors doing the same. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'd like to start off, Jesse, by saying you've done a very fine job. Um, you were punctual, uh, you know, very, very reliable, dependable, and well-spoken, and really appreciate your work. Uh, you certainly added a lot to the meeting. Mm -hmm. And you even learned to breathe during your announcements. <laughs> <laughs> First one, it was one breath. <laughs> but you did a great job this year, and we're, we're going to miss you. So thank you. thank you very much. And congratulations on your film, by the way. Thank you. Uh, middle school band concert, I had a chance to go see that. Miss Powell does wonders with the even just the sixth graders from, uh, from September to, to May is just phenomenal and then from 
uh, September 6th grade to uh, May of 8th grade. She just does a great job with them, teaches them some good skills, and they sounded, sounded great. Uh, all students out there finish strong. You still have SOLs, exams, those kinds of things, so it's, it's not summer yet. Hang in there. Um, and a special thanks to, to council, as, and I'd like to ditto some of the comments that were made uh, uh, earlier. If it hadn't been for council support, we'd be in a, a, a be totally different having to deal with, with what we've had to deal with. They recognize the importance of the school system. They uh, appreciate all the efforts that go into making the school system run smoothly, and they're willing to step up and support us when we need that, so we're very appreciative to them. Uh, and also, I would like to give a um, heartfelt, uh, just just offer up some, some thoughts and prayers to those in Oklahoma. Seems like any time something like that uh, uh, impacts children, when you deal with children and, and on a day-to-day -day basis and, and pour your work into improving children's lives, it just seems to hit a whole lot harder. So uh, our thoughts and prayers are with them. And with that, uh, do we have any material for review? No, we do not. Then we will adjourn to the work session. Thank you for coming. Just three. Okay. Can you sneak something real quick? What's this? The Coast and Schools? Oh.